and welcome back to another Spark -a Nation conversation. For those of you that don't know, a Spark -a Nation is a spark that ignites passion, that leads to action, that changes what's normal. Today, my guest is Claudia Bros, and Claudia is in in the northern, up in northern Italy, uh, where she lives. And at the moment, you're in a heat wave, Claudia. Yes, that's right. Everywhere in Europe, and also in um, uh, very northern Europe, um, uh, northern, northern Italy. Yeah, where I'm at the moment, it's uh, extremely hot. Yeah. So it's in total opposites, um, which is kind of a nice segue to think. So I think where where we might start, you've got a, a very nice piece on your website, which I'll link folks to underneath this video. But you say, I believe it's possible for you to be both powerful and kind. I believe the quality of your attention determines the quality of your life. I believe that you can hold opposites to work together and not against. What do you believe, you say, on your website? So I thought we might start with the quality of your attention determines the quality of your life. What a wonderful statement. Where did, it, where did that come from for you? Um, I think it comes from that I got... Um, since a long time, very often annoyed or um, bothered by um, us humans being um, or becoming more and more superficial, um, fast, not really uh, paying attention to what happens around us or to people around us. Um, so this um, lack of time in, which pushes everybody to just keep going without pausing and actually paying attention to certain things. And um, there's a lot of talk about mindfulness, um, yeah. which is obviously part of it. I wanted to, um, I came up with the term and coined it with the paying attention because paying attention means for me, a lot of different things. And um, it means in basically three major things. Right. It means focusing, focusing your attention on something, it, paying attention, giving your attention, but also means caring. If I pay attention to a person, listening to him or taking care of, uh, paying attention to my elderly mother, that means I care for her or friends. Yeah. And the yeah. third one, would be situational awareness, paying attention to what is happening around us. And um, I think all these three elements are so important in life and especially yeah. how we live today. Um, that's why I thought they can determine your, your life and your lifestyle. Yes. Yeah, I think there are wonderful three. I probably add a fourth. We haven't really paid attention to the climate change. That's why you have extreme heat. And we hit down here in Australia, we've got these extreme floods. That would be my category of situational awareness. So okay. uh, no, situational awareness, like being aware of what happens around you. So this is right around you, like you walk in traffic with your yeah. mobile phone looking on it while you walk over the street. Or it's uh, awareness what happens maybe in your neighborhood or anywhere where you move or go around in, uh, uh, on the uh, outer um, highways, or it is, you know, you can, or what happens in the broader world, you know, being aware yes. uh, of what's happening, what we're doing to ourselves with and climate change is totally falls into that. But, you know, we don't pay attention to it. We just live our own lives and don't pay attention to uh, what it means for the future. You know? Yeah, so there's a, there's a day of reckoning coming uh, isn't it we need to act quickly but but i think overall uh i was trying to think of the name of the lady wonderful dr allen she wrote the book about mindfulness about 25 years ago um alan langer dr alan langer um oh, okay and i think there's many people don't understand mindfulness and it's become this kind of buzzword Whereas what I like about your work is you've kind of zeroed in and said, well, look, it's it's about paying attention. And and I like these three areas. So let, let's let's explore the focusing, the first, the first bit. Let's let's expand mm -hmm. on that one. 
Well, focusing, um, I mean, that's, I think, also what everybody connects first with paying yeah. attention. Yeah. Uh, it's, and especially these days, uh, trying to get rid of all these distractions, which are constantly um, bombarding us and keep that out and focus on whatever is in front of you. If it's the person you're talking to, if it's the task, usually that's what we mean with focusing on the work we want to do and leaving out all the things that are um, not essential or not important. Um, we tend to jump on the stuff which is urgent, which doesn't always mean it is really important. So we really need to learn to, um, um, yeah, focus means um, also making decisions uh, with all the choices, like, okay, I leave this out and I decide for these few things to focus on, uh, they need my attention. And if you are really aware of this, it's kind of also a power that in your hands. I mean, and yes. people cannot bombard you. Oh, can you please do this you know, in, in your work environment and so on? But if you know, no, these are my essentials. These are the priorities of the priority. And then, um, and really, this is what I focus on. And if you're really aware of it, it's much easier also to say no to all the other things. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. I think I've noticed um, that when I, I, I tend to work in either 30, 60 or 90 minute blocks and in those time frames, I'll just focus on one thing and mm -hmm. I'll cut everything else out, like no phone, nothing. Yeah. I clear my desk. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I just have my com my computer, maybe a sheet of paper. That's you know the stuff I'm working on, but everything else has disappeared. Yeah, that's and the best rule. Yeah, I find I, I I do much more productive work than when I was trying to do all these things. Yeah, well, we are always saying oh, multitasking, multitasking, but it's uh, it's it's not true because that's not how our brain are wired. There are no. certain things, of course, we multitask. You know, uh, uh, that's an automatic thing, like uh, how we move outside or how we drive the car. You do multitasking, but yeah. if you really want to get some work done, uh, let's say, um, yeah, multitasking doesn't work because it takes for your brain so much time every time to switch again. Time and energy, as, as I understand it, too. I think there's some research that says when it comes to work, if you're focused on multitask, you're actually draining the brain of energy. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if you focus just on one thing, the brain's got yeah. more energy. The brain's got more energy. Yeah, yeah. And you, if you switch or get interrupted, it takes you 20 minutes to get back into your to your task. Yes. And, uh, yes. Of, for example, one thing I do is like where you like you were describing, clean your table and everything, so you have the focus. Then I also have always a notepad next to me so if any thoughts pop up in my head which are not related to the work i'm doing something to do or some idea for another thing then i can just quickly make a note then it's out of my brain i don't need to worry that i maybe yeah. forget about it or yeah, yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. There's, there's already there's already two or three ideas have popped into my head while we've been talking so i've written them down and we'll, i'll think about them later mm -hmm. Because um, if, if yeah. I'm not giving if I'm not giving you full attention, I, I've missed the point, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm fascinated in, in this next area, which I think is so important. It, you said it's about giving your attention. It's actually a form of caring for somebody else. Yeah. Also, um, if we we say uh, we pay attention. Uh, to a person and which means for me nothing else than caring so if i pay attention to my conversation partner um, and really listening um, that means i really care because i want to know what he has to say or i care about the person that i really listen and want to have a conversation and, and an exchange or i pay attention let's say to my elderly mother um, 
to uh, attend to her and to uh, to help her, but that means caring. So for me, caring is such a big um, element of of giving attention. Yes. Giving attention, giving attention, I would say in, in English, yeah. And, and I guess kindness is a part of the equation as well. Is, is, kindness, yeah. is kindness part of caring or is it something additional? I think it's part, a part of uh, caring. Um, I have kindness also in my long list of all these um, uh, keywords uh, which are connected to attention, which I try to, and to put in one of those three categories. And kindness is under caring. Um, yeah. Because I mean, we it's can the- have better relationships uh, overall if we are kind. What is so difficult about it? It's nothing soft about it. Uh, which is often says you can be kind and strong I mean there's no contradiction in it no so and and that list you mentioned is that readily available on your site or uh no but that's a good point actually this is for me always for organizing thoughts and but that's a good point I could do this yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah maybe you could send it to me and we can put it under this video eventually I think I think that's useful um, helping people, if you've got something to look at, that would probably help your own attention. What are the yeah. other thing? What are the other things that come under that giving your attention heading? Um, listening is one. Yeah. Um, um, Oh, so listening is for me a big one uh, because we're, we seem to have a hard time to actually listen to other people yeah. because we always want to talk ourselves or we have our own thoughts. We want to get out instead of first really listening to what the other person has to say. If it's your employees, if it's even between uh, 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 your colleagues or your boss uh, to really understand the other person. Or if it is to the elderly person who has a whole different other maybe uh, thinking or mindset meanwhile, and it's we put our thinking on it, uh, and instead of really listening what they really desire or feel. And the same with your kids. You know, do we really listen to our children? We don't take the time. Um, time is another one which uh, I mean, falls in all, all the categories, but it's a big one under caring because caring means taking time, taking time to listen, you know, taking yeah. time to give the attention, and which we are so greedy with. We don't want to give our time, which means that takes the caring um, from caring away. Yeah. I wonder, have you done any study on this? Because it, it's automatically obvious to me that if I'm if I'm truly listening to other people, if I'm taking the time to give people attention, that's got to energise the conversation. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think that we have some good leaders out there who have uh, the sense of really listening and understand that this is a big part of um better leadership um and there is there are a lot of studies also done on uh on listening uh, what the positive effects are but i think again we are always rushed and we know it the theoretically but we are not practically doing it because we are we are uh, we have to move on you know we i don't have the time so people are wearing it seems to me business busyness as a badge of honor. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. It's actually the least the least most productive thing, being busy. Yeah. Yeah. I often say to people, you know, how are you going? And the, the first answer they give me is busy. And and then I say, busy doing what? Mm-hmm. Which, which kind of stops people a bit because I think we're doing a lot of doing, but we're not being much being. And as a consequence, yeah. a consequence, we're all suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Less, less doing more being. It, it seems yeah. to be, uh, I would say, 
there's something about the, the new pathways to life, uh, less doing, more being. I think people need to find their own way to do that. Mm -hmm. but, but attention is a big part of it. I mean, what, 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 what are your thoughts on giving attention to ourselves? Well, that was my next point, actually. Okay. I was reading my mind. <laughs> uh, that, is, that also uh, falls for me under um, caring uh, or self-awareness is a big point. Uh, paying attention to yourself. You know? So you, to, you take care, you give attention to yourself, meaning you also care for yourself. You think about, you take the time to reflect and think about what are your visions what are your values uh how do you want to live your life what what does it mean for you to work and to live so that eventually if you are become aware of this and have the self-awareness you can create your lifestyle accordingly if you don't take the time to really think about what is valuable to you or what are your visions where you want to go then you const constantly go you don't know where you're going and where to say yes and no to and uh wobbling along and don't have you are angry at some point like well that's not really the life i wanted to live or the lifestyle I mean, you can you can have a certain lifestyle you appreciate but you need to be aware of it and then you can construct your life respectively yeah but that means pay attention to your thoughts pay attention to give yourself some attention to figure this out or give your self the attention to listen and hear what your body says in terms of health and well-being so we we push and uh, we kill ourselves by not listening to our body and just keep going and then we end up with the famous burnout or whatever yeah. um, because we don't listen to our body what our body is telling us like stop or do this or that or don't feel comfortable or this is too much and we just ignore it you know, we don't pay attention to it yeah I've, I've read that a lot of disease one, one of the causes of disease is not paying attention whereas if we had paid attention to the pain when we first had it so yeah instead of putting up with it we might have ended up with what was you know a chronic condition yeah yeah. Had we paid attention way back when it was just a little pain. Yeah. Yeah. But we've almost we've almost um, taught ourselves to kind of soldier on in a way, haven't we? Which is yeah, a, yeah, is a bit of the the psyche of of folk. You know, we want to be busy, which doesn't necessarily mean productive, but people think it does. We want to soldier on when we're ill because we think that's there's something good about that, even though we know in our hearts it isn't. Yeah. And probably both of those things mean that we've either stopped paying attention to ourselves and other people or we haven't yet learned how to pay attention. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's also a good point. We have maybe learned it or we have unlearned it. Um, because we get um, pushed from an early age on. I mean, these days it's even getting worse that ki kids don't have free play time anymore because they have a whole schedule like the adults. And it's not like in way back where kids just had their time to play outside, could play on the street because they didn't even have to be afraid of it. And that's also getting more and more a problem um and yeah. just get lost lost in their playing and play and playfulness and uh and and i guess also in that time where they get they learn paying attention uh not getting lost in time but they're getting lost also in details and pay attention to little things and then at some point get called back in and we have lost it now you're all, all on this on a schedule what what a wonderful expression! Lost lost in their playing. <laughs> I, I remember that as a child, uh -huh. and I, I see a lot of children who who um, yeah they've been programmed almost to do yeah. this, do your homework, do this, have forty five minutes of you know computer time or tablet time or whatever, and then do this, do that, go to bed. Get up tomorrow, do the same thing. I have all this. So I go to ballet, and then I have to go to uh, piano lessons, and then from 
from 5 to 5.45, you can play with your friend and then you have to go to a soccer training and so on and so on. I mean, yeah, it, it's scary. It's obvious that it's not good for well-being and, that's, and yet that's become the norm. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. it, it, is this a part of your third area, which you're saying it's awareness of situations? Yeah, with this, I mean... Uh, awareness what happens around us uh yeah i mean it starts when you walk on the street and realize what is actually happening uh if it's that you realize actually what's happening the traffic or the people who you're you're passing and we don't realize these things anymore and this can even go that's in our daily life that we partially don't have any more situational awareness which be for one, because it's so, uh, we are so, our heads are so full, uh, we are on a schedule. And then, of course, the, the world around us gets so busy with so many people and, and movements and, and, and traffic and people and, and all these advertisements. And we can't, there's so much. I mean, I can see that uh, we are like almost like blocking out certain things, yeah. but which is then on the other hand dangerous. Um, and, uh, Situational awareness, so you have it in daily life when we move around. If you go into your uh, office and don't realize anymore, maybe the secretary or people there, uh, or situational awareness, then <clears throat> if you travel or you're uh, in an airplane or anywhere, maybe also in dangerous situations, uh, you don't realize it anymore. You, you are not aware of it. You don't see it. You don't perceive it. And it has a lot to do with perception. Um, which yeah. uh, <clears throat> now I know I know you you run events for photographers. And yes, your husband is a photographer. You're a photographer yourself. No, I don't don't do it myself. But uh, um, yeah, I'm running a photo photography academy, and this is also um, or with my husband being a photographer, I'm more my situational awareness has. Um, that, that's become, what I was going to ask. It, it must, yeah, have helped, yeah. must have helped your yeah. situational awareness. Exactly. Um, and it's wonderful to see with all those photographers um, how their situational awareness, how their perception, because that's also what the Photo Academy is about. Yeah. It's more about the perception and the seeing and the creativity, not about the technical parts. How they or as, if you intend to photograph, um, how you walk around and actually see things because yeah. you pay attention, you, know? you perceive what's around you um, because we are looking for things. You want to see things, you want to perceive things. You, want to, you also want to understand maybe the context. I mean, that's the other thing which is so important for situational awareness and it needs, it gives you a context and the connection of things. You know, what because everything is interconnected and if you block this out you miss out a lot of information and um, I think it's also for everybody a nice way of practicing situational awareness is photographing and it doesn't mean you need to take have a big camera today you can have your smartphone which is yeah. actually a camera that happens to be uh, making phone calls and uh, yes. so if you even if you walk to work or in anywhere in between and your break when you take a break uh lunch break and maybe take a little walk look around and look for things or give yourself a little topic and it's like oh today i'm looking for lines or for people or for shadows or for something just to train your brain for situational awareness and to really look see you know perceive what's out there Train, train your brain for situational awareness. What a, what a wonderful line that is. So in these areas, um, do, you, do, you run, do you run anything online to teach people how to improve their attention? Do you have anything happening? No, I'm just doing it through writing, doing publishing, and then at some point when it's possible, also giving talks about it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because just for folks, um, we'll put this at the bottom of the video, but Claudia and I were part of a team of 16 authors for the book Enough. And Claudia has a great 
great story in there about attention. So we'll we'll put a link to, to that. Uh, I'll just make a note that we put the link under this under this video. Mm -hmm. When you when you give a talk on attention, what's what are the messages that you're sharing with an audience? What are you what are you trying to get across? It's, um, basically, all, most of the points we were just saying, uh, are elaborating on what a broad um, spectrum attention actually is, uh, yeah. we are maybe not aware of, and how this is such a powerful skill, um, which will help us to move forward in, in the future. Um, help us to handle our daily lives or to create our uh, lifestyle. Yes, it's interesting that you call it a skill. Uh, I think it seems it is it does come up in articles and and so on about skill, but it's it's one of those things that would probably when we when we think about it, it's probably a skill that we all need to master. Yeah, well, that was that was my original starting point that I and I went different ways. But originally, I started with saying it is uh, attention is really a skill we all need to master. And if we do, we actually do hope I find would be a better place. I mean, it's grand to say, but if we yeah. pay more attention to each other, um, we have better interconnections, interrelationships. Uh, if we pay attention to ourselves, we um, then we better take care of our own well-being and our happiness. And uh, if we are able to focus, then we don't. We really get the most important, essential things done. And because there is too much distraction out there. Yeah. where we still react to. So if we master that, you can actually, for ourselves, have a much better life and you can even create a better lifestyle and yes. all together, uh, we create better society. Yes. Have you come across Cal Newport's book, Deep Work? Yeah. Yeah, he, I think he really explains it well, the difference between deep work and shallow work and that there's a big connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With what you're saying, isn't there? Um, yeah. Paying attention to ourselves, paying attention to others, getting the essential things done, they're all kind of deep work actions. Yeah, they're... they're and and, and by with awareness. Yeah. I was going to say, by consequence, a lot less shallow work. Yeah. No, yeah, exactly. And then it takes us <clears throat> away from what annoys me in this world is superficiality, um, yeah. quantity over quality, um, yeah, being shallow. In in and that is in in every area of our lives. You know? it's like in, if it's in business, in business, in the working world, if it's in the private world, we are just becoming too just. It's like we're as if we were just dancing on the on the tips of the waves instead of really being in the water or going with the waves. And we're just kind of tipping and dancing on top of it. Yeah, we're kind um, of surfing and not swimming. Yeah. It's okay to surf sometimes, but not all the time. Yeah. Some surfers might disagree, but but I think as a metaphor, yeah, we, if we're just running along the top of the water go gliding along the top of the water and, and we're not actually in the water swimming then there's a there's a, right. a massive difference yeah 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 well this has been great claudia um before we go what would be your 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 top three tips to help people pay more attention uh oh Top three tips. I think one is, um, which I find very important for all of them is self-awareness, practicing your self-awareness. And this yeah. is um, just taking the time. I know everybody has different 
schedules if you're a freelancer or if you're in a, in a structure, but uh, for company, at least daily, a little bit chunk of time for yourself to reflect and really have some self-awareness about what is your values, your uh, what's important to you and your vision. Um, yeah, it's the number one leadership skill, self-awareness. Yeah. So, yeah, practicing on that. And um, I think also awareness in your daily life to what are you doing? Like in, in every action, I mean, we can in every action, we cannot be always so aware, but I think it's, yes. I always feel like you walk around um, and it's possible to be more aware who you're talking to, who you're passing, uh, uh, where are you going? Um, just this, this switch on uh, of, um, um, yeah, per perceptional awareness, uh, yeah. Um, being there you know, in the moment and realizing what is happening. A wonderful Jim Rowan line that just popped into my mind. He said, wherever you are, be there. Yeah, actually, yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, wonderful, wonderful, Claudia. Well, thanks so much for, for sharing your insights. It's been great. Thank you very much, Ian, for this opportunity. You're welcome.